Hi guys, welcome to this video and I'm going to be showing you through that 12-8 minor blues feel, that kind of slow blues, which you might have heard, and here's two of my favourites, in Tim Pan Alley, Stevie Ray Vaughan, and if you can get the live version, do, I highly recommend it, and Since I've Been Loving You by Led Zeppelin, both really great examples of how much fun it can be to do a minor blues. And all that is, is taking the same three chord idea, the one, four, five, but turning them into minor. And therefore you've got different style of chords that you can play, of course minor chords across the neck, and different pentatonic ideas that you can use as well. And I'll be breaking down the rhythm for you, as well as how to actually play through each individual part and how you can use it in your own improvising. Now don't forget that if you click the link below this video, you'll go through to our website and you'll find a download for the backing track so you can actually practice along with this beautiful slow style blues track. Okay. As well as that, there's also interactive fretboard diagrams, a full write-up and the tab for you to use and learn. Just one little word of advice, when you do download this backing track, try and stay focused on learning these chords before you do as I did and got slightly carried away with just jamming lead <laughs> over the top. <laughs> Okay, now just before we get on to the actual uh, ins and outs of the tab and how to actually play through this part, I just want to talk quickly about 12-8 time signature, and it's something you're going to come across with slow blues tracks, not necessarily minor slow blues tracks, but all types of slow blues. And all it essentially means is a 6-8 timing, okay, so you're going to count in 6, um, and I'll go through it in a second, but because it's so slow, rather than having 24 bars of 6, we're going to have 12 bars of 12, if you see what I mean. So let me kind of make this a bit clearer. If I take this as an example, here's one bar. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay? Now, I wouldn't actually count it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. All I do in any 12 8 time signature is count in six, like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, or so one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so it's nice and easy on the count, but that's just one bar. Okay, so two times six, 12, simple. 12, eight, that's just one bar. Okay, and importantly, when you are doing a blues style thing or you're in 12, eight, typically the one beat is kind of like the bass drum and the four beat is the snare. Okay, so very, very typically, as a general rule, this is a great rhythm. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So you really attack the strings on the four, and you do that gentle kind of low end on the one. And that isn't always the case, but it's a really good general rule of thumb that you can use when playing in 12-8. Okay, so let's actually go through this part. Now, it is a 12-bar blues in the key of B minor, okay? And normally you'll find a 12-bar blues is in a kind of dominant uh, setting. So lots of dominant chords, one, four, five, in using dominant chords, ninths or whatever. Um, in this instance, we're doing it with minor chords. That, give it, that gives it that dark edge, okay? So B minor is the one chord. E minor is the four chord. And F sharp minor is the five chord, okay? So as we kind of go through this, you'll see that it's just really these three chords that we're using, we're just adding a lot of extra stuff on top of that, okay? And remember, it's that same 12-8 rhythm that we talked about just a moment ago. So, let's just kind of go through from the start. So the first lick sounds like this. Okay? So really what we're doing here is we're playing around with the B minor, okay, but we're making it a B minor seven, okay, just to add a little bit more kind of relaxation, as it were, to that, uh, that kind of opening sound. Uh, so the B minor seven, I play with just thumb over the top, and then my first finger on the D, G, B, and E strings for that minor seven kind of sound, okay? And then I'm playing around really with the minor pentatonic, the B minor pentatonic shape one. and the B minor scale, shape one. So the B minor scale, 
is just the pentatonic scale with two extra notes, okay? And if you're really unsure as to that, those shapes, then head over to the website, which is in the link below the YouTube video, um, and you'll see these kind of shapes written out in a kind of interactive tab setting, so it's really, really nice. Uh, easy to see, basically. So we're using those notes, and we're gonna start by just hitting that crunch, okay, as we talked about already, so one, two, three, four, five, six, okay, to kind of get that, that kind of feel correct. And then we're gonna do this. So all I'm doing is grabbing the seventh fret and seventh fret on the G and the high E string, and I'm sliding it across a whole tone and then back a whole tone. Okay? And that's, you know, that little kind of harmony there, it's just using those notes from that scale, you know, the B minor scale. It sounds really fantastic over that one chord. And I'm using my fingers just to pick that. You can just do it with the plectrum, but make sure you're muting the note in between if you're gonna do that. Okay, and then I'm gonna kinda of go to this little kinda of Hendrix-esque lick, uh, where I'm just gonna take the seventh fret on the G and the B string, and I'm gonna hammer on the G string, okay, uh, ninth fret, but leave the seventh fret ringing out on the B string. Get that really cool kind of doubled sound. Come back like so. Then back to the root note. And then I'm gonna kind of leave my first finger kind of just flattened casually down there, as if I was still doing that B minor seventh chord. And then just hammer on, again, same kind of style Hendrix approach, whereby we hammer on the B, so the, seventh, the ninth fret of the D string, but leave the first finger ringing out. So you get this all in all for that first little lick. Okay. And that really is the first bar. So if I counted that through, it'd be one, uh, sorry, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one. So that last bit there comes in on the first of the next bar, and that's why it's just making a B minor chord, okay? Because bar number two is just a B minor chord. So let's talk about the next part. So the next part goes like this. So I've just hit this bit here. I'm gonna hit that same crunch, and then it goes like this. Okay, so another really cool little idea here. Okay, and all I'm doing at this point is I'm coming down to the pentatonic shape four in B minor. Okay, so using the same pentatonic scale, but just now in a different part of the neck. Okay, and I'm gonna take my first finger and flatten it on the second fret on the D and the G string, and slide across two frets and back. Okay, before then doing this. So again, same two notes, okay? I'm just gonna play them. D and the G string, same two notes there on the fourth frets now, D and the G string, and then I'm going to grab my first finger on the second fret of the G, and my third fin second finger on the third fret of the B, and slide it across a, a whole tone. So again, just using notes of that pentatonic scale. Okay. And to finish up, we just move back here, so I'm on the, th the first finger is on the third fret of the B, and my second finger is on the fourth fret of the G. That kind of just creates, if you imagine that, that's your minor, your B minor chord, okay? So that's moving into the bar three and just highlighting the B minor chord uh, notes within it, okay? So that bit goes. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll do the next couple of licks and then we'll put that first four bars together, okay? Because at that point, we're still over the B minor chord. Okay, we're still doing that B minor. Now, the lick three looks like this. Okay, really cool, almost like neo soul type thing over the top of this blues, um, which I like. It's a good addition that you can add in. And essentially, what we're doing is we're starting by going through a B minor arpeggio. So we're doing the B, then the flat third, then the fifth. Okay, and then what I'm doing is I'm kind of keeping my fingers in that position. Okay, so I'm going to keep my second finger on the fifth fret of the D of the A string. My first finger is going to kind of flatten against the fourth fret of the D and the G strings, and I'm going to hammer on my third finger to the sixth fret of the G string. So you get this. 
you imagine the B underneath that as really just a B minor uh, arpeggio, B minor chord, where we're also adding in the kind of seventh, the, this extra note from the scale, okay? Making a really nice sound, okay? So it's really important you get that hammer on. Okay, and you can pick that with your fingers or just with the plectrum, it doesn't really matter. And then I'm going to take that idea and move it through the shapes, okay? So then I'm going to move my first finger up here to bar the seventh fret and then hammer on the G string ninth fret. Same again, up a whole tone. Again, just kind of utilizing all those notes in the B minor scales around this area, okay? You can always remember, you can do this as long as you remember how it relates in position pentatonic shape one there. So I can think, if I can remember that that's based around the shape five, this is one, this is kind of like based around that shape two, so it's usable, and then back to that shape one area, okay? So yeah, all you do is from there, up a whole tone, same thing, down a whole tone, same thing, and then back to B minor. So I just then hit just a, a B minor, kind of little fraction of that bar chord. So we get this. Okay. We'll work out the timing in a minute. Let's just get the kind of the notes right, the sounds correct, okay? So that's the third lick. Now the fourth part, okay, is we're, we're kind of in this position here and we hit that same, you know, crack as we do all the time on the four. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then we're going to do this. We're going to let it ring out for a little bit before going. Okay. So all this is is a lick in pentatonic shape five of B minor. And I'm just going to simply hammer on that Hendrixy vibe. And then we've got this cool little kind of grace note attack here. Okay. So I'm going to do this big thing there. And then what I'm essentially doing is, after I've done that hammer on from the fifth fret to the seventh fret, leaving the first finger ringing out, remember? And what we essentially do is we go from the fifth fret of the B, seventh fret of the G, back to the fourth fret of the G, but very, very quickly. When you slow it down, it sounds a bit messy. But essentially what's happening is I'm doing a down stroke here, then I'm going to go an up, up, down. Okay, and in reality when you speed that up, you might find that sometimes you actually just don't even hit that second note there. The point is that you go to hit it. The key thing about doing that kind of technique is that you go to hit it. Whether you hit it or not is almost irrelevant. The fact is that you've gone to hit it, so you get a cool little um, extra sound, a little grace note sound, which adds the kind of flavor to that lick, okay? There it is a bit slower and a bit slower still. And then I just continue down the pentatonic shape until I get back here. Okay, onto the fifth fret of the A, and I'm going to resolve to the E because we're about to move to the four chord. Okay, so that lick again, nice and slow. Okay, so what I'll just do is I'm going to play through that first four bars. That's all the B minor. If you just saw it on a chord chart, you'd just see B minor for four bars. Okay, I'm going to do it nice and slow, and it goes like this. So, one. Five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five. In terms of your rhythms as you go through this, that's really for you to kind of piece that together as you go through with the backing track. It's so important that you go ahead, go over to the website and download the track because that's going to really help you find your way through that uh, without having to count on top because there are some of this which is very, you know, pulled across the beat and to count at the same time is, is very, very tricky. 
But there's the basic ideas. Hopefully it's like loads of really cool licks that you can use. Then we're into the E, we're into the four chord, okay? And we're gonna do, I'll do the whole four chord section. It sounds like this. So we just hit the E. One, two, three, four, five, six. 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 One. So let's just go through that. So first things first, we're, we're creating an E minor seven chord that looks like this. If you've never seen this before, you're gonna really love this one. It's a bit of a finger twister. Essentially, it's uh, my second finger on the E, on the root note. Then I've got my first finger on the flat third. Then I've got my third finger on the flat seven. And I've got my little finger on the third again, the flat third. So the reason I like this chord is because it emits the five, the kind of unnecessary note within any seventh chord, the five, okay? We just, instead we've got a doubled up of the flat three, which is nice, it gives it that extra minor feel, okay? If you really hate that shape, then just play a, a normal E minor seven bar chord, but I would highly recommend giving this one a shot. Um, and the reason why is because the next bit, you simply slide your little finger down one fret, and there we have really really cool E minor style chord but instead of the flat third on top we've actually got the second on top so it's kind of like an E minor 9 okay well it is in fact an E minor 9 uh, because we've got the root flat third flat seven and a 9 on top okay so we hit this kind of we've hit the E root note on the first beat one two three crack on the four and then we're gonna, for the start of the next bar, we're just gonna strum through this E minor nine. And if you're using a strat and you've got a whammy bar, just kind of go, go ahead on the whammy bar. Just give it a little bit of, you know, whammying. Um, if not, don't worry, just let that ring out. Or kind of, if you've got a Les Paul, you can, you can come up and hit the strings on this end to kind of get them to move around a bit. Um, and then that brings us into the second bar of E minor, which is, we're just gonna come to this basic E minor bar chord, okay? I'm just gonna hit the chord without the root here, okay? Just very, very gently. Don't want any more here, just a subtle, subtle hit. You know, we're really varying the, the dynamic as well as the actual movement across the guitar. And then I'm just gonna be back in that kind of B minor pentatonic shape one, which is where I'm basically jamming out my lead. And I'm gonna hit a big note. Okay, I'm gonna grab that seventh fret okay, of the G string. And then I'm gonna do this cool hammer off to nowhere, pull off to nowhere type thing. Or hammer on to nowhere, whatever you wanna call it. But essentially it's just a really quick rundown which just is like a throwaway lick which we wanna just get rid of as quickly as we can and it sounds so cool. We must hit a big first note. Okay, bit of vibrato on it. And then basically all I'm doing, all I'm doing guys, is I'm going from the ninth fret to seventh fret to ninth fret on these strings, D string and the A string, okay? And the only note I'm picking is this first one. Everything else is just pull off and hammer on from nowhere. So I'm just hammering on straight onto that string. No mention of the plectrum. And I tend to use my second finger as it comes across like that. As soon as you've hit that last note, you need to stop the sound dead. Okay, it can't go like this just won't work, it needs to be like that. So you go, like so, okay? And then I just do a simple build up back to the E. Uh, back to the B, sorry, back to the root note of B. Okay, so that whole section sounds like this. So we got that E, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, Five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one. And we're back into the main section, okay? Into the B, into the root chord, okay? Now, at that point, so now we're back onto the, the B and we've got two bars of B, we're gonna go like this. So, really, really cool idea here. And basically what I'm doing is I'm just taking the, the top two strings, so the B and the E string, and I'm hammering on just the high E string each time, okay? But it's this same shape, we're just gonna move it across the guitar. So I'm gonna start by hammering on, 
and coming back. Then I'm going to move up to the 10th fret where my box 2 of the pentatonic is. And I'm just going to hammer on this time. Then I'm going to move up to the 12th fret where my box 3 is of the pentatonic and hammer on again. Back to the second box and hammer on again. Back to the first box. And then resolve it to those Bs. Okay, so we get this. Really, really nice little idea. Again, it's got a bit of a neo soul kind of flavour to it, um, just with those those kind of sharp hammer ons. Resolve it nicely and come back to that lick we did in the first ever lick for this solo or this kind of part. Okay, and that's our section over the. E, okay, over the B, sorry. So it goes like this. So imagine I've just come back to this. G, four, five, six. Okay, crack. And then we come down to the F sharp minor called big F sharp minor. One, two, three, four. And we're just gonna grab, apart from the big bar chord of F sharp minor, we're going to hit nice and hard. We're then going to move over to a kind of cage chord version of the F sharp. Okay, so it's just an inverted version. So I've got my flat third, fifth, and root. In that order, it's kind of from the C minor shape of the cage chords. Okay. And there we have our lovely, lovely chord. If you're not sure what the C minor shape of the cage chords are, then head on over. We've got a link, there'll be a link on this video where you can actually see a full course on the minor cage chords, which is a good one, believe me, uh, important one. And we're just going to grab that chord quickly like that, okay? It kind of, you'll hear it as you play along to the track, it, it kind of sits off that last little drum snare, and then we come back in. So this part simply goes one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, E minor, big kind of rake through the strings, from high string to low, get a really big sound, bring in the whammy bar if you've got it, okay, and that takes us back to the B minor for our kind of turnaround. So what is the turnaround? The turnaround is that part of the, of the blues, whatever, whether it's a minor blues or a dominant blues or however you're doing it, where we kind of quickly shuffle through the chords. So in terms of chords, what's happening here is we're going from the one, one, two, three, four, five, six to the four, two, three, four, five, six, back to the one, and then over to the five, okay? And in this instance, we're gonna do an augmented. I'll get to that in a second, okay? So basically, it's a B minor, okay? But instead of just throwing through the chords, we're gonna do this, slightly cooler. Okay, so that little lick I'm doing, I, I've stolen straight from Steve Ray Vaughan, one of my favourite licks of all time. It's so simple, but it's so good. And all I'm doing is that, same again, B minor pentatonic, but with the blues note. Okay, so this blues note here. Okay, and all I'm doing is I'm going from the ninth fret up to the 10 and back to the 9 really quickly. Then pulling off, okay, back to the 7th fret. Slow, it's that. But fast, it really sounds cool, doesn't it? Okay, so one plectrum stroke. And then I'm just simply very, very, very carefully, as in, you know, dynamically, very quietly, going nine, seven. Okay, and I do that for each chord. So I'm going to hit the B minor first. And then E minor 7, B minor 7, and then I'm going to finish on this augmented, F sharp augmented, um, which first of all, in terms of the chord shape, it is F sharp, A sharp, D, and F sharp octave. Okay, so in terms of frets, we've got uh, the 9, 8, 7, 7. And augmented is a great chord when you want to resolve back somewhere. So the five chord in a blues can generally always be turned into an augmented chord because basically what it's doing is, is creating a lot of tension, which then resolves perfectly to the root chord. Okay, so we could have just played the F sharp minor there, 
But as you can hear, going from the F sharp augmented gives it a real sense of completion when we come back to that B minor. So there we have it. There's the whole kind of part. I'm just going to play through it once more slowly. So you've got the whole thing together and it sounds like this. One, two. Come back to the E minor. A little bit of picking if you want. And then, here we go. The steel The steel Eve and steel Vaughan and Shazam. Okay, so that's the whole thing. Now, remember, it's great to learn as a whole piece. Make sure you go over to the website, download the backing track and learn it and get it played along to that. But then just take the bits that you really like and add them to your own playing. So it might just be one little lick out of all of that that you absolutely love and you can now add to your blues style, your slow blues, or even better, your minor slow blues style playing. I really hope you enjoyed it, guys, and I'll see you again soon.